If you've been watching my content for a while, you've likely heard me mention Investiture a couple of times already. Well, I recently realized that not everyone would actually know what Investiture is and may be a bit lost when I mention it. Then I realized that a video on the basics of Investiture would be exactly what my channel needs and my Cosmia 101 series would be the perfect vehicle for this kind of video. So if you've been wondering what Investiture is and wanted an explanation, then this video is definitely for you. I'll go over the basics in brief detail to get you up to speed on this core concept to the Cosmere, but if you want even further detail I highly recommend doing research on it yourself as there's a lot to dig into here. I will however try to keep this as brief as I can without skipping over any major details. What is Investiture? Simply put, Investiture is the pure magical energy of the Cosmere. It takes many forms and responds to many different kinds of stimuli, but at its core it's simply the magical energy that forms the basis for all magic systems within the Cosmere. Accessing Investiture is accomplished through many different ways. On Scadrail, it's the consumption of alimantic metals if you're an Alamancer. On Nalthus, it's the use of breaths and biochroma if you're an Awakener. On Roshar, it's through using Stormlight to power your Radiant abilities. There are many I haven't mentioned, but this is the basic idea. You access Investiture through the different magics on different planets. Another important aspect to consider is the intent of the user of the Investiture. Intent forms a very important part of using Investiture as many magic systems rely on the user's intent to make the magic work. The amount and level of intent varies from system to system of course. An Awakener needs to have a very clear and descriptive intent in mind when giving a command to an Awakened object. A Lightweaver also needs to have a very specific intent in mind to form the illusion they have in their mind. A Hemologist, however, needs less intent as they merely need to intend to make a Hemologic spike and it'll work. Likewise, a Windrunner merely needs to intend to use the magic as the surge of gravitation will do the same thing regardless. Now, another important aspect of Investiture is Colour. Colour often plays a key role in the manifestation of Investiture. Of course, the obvious example is Awakening as it is specifically a colour-based magic system. But colour is also related to Investiture in other ways. For example, each shard has its own colour associated with it. Preservation's colour is white, while Cultivation is green. Honour is blue-white, Ruin is black, etc. And in terms of magic systems, you'll find other instances of color being associated with magic. For example, think about how each order of radiance has armor with different colored glows, and how the different forms of light, stormlight, warlight, voidlight, etc. in the latest stormlight book has different hues in their coloring. It's also important to remember that investiture isn't just external magical energy. All humans, animals, objects and natural forces have some innate internal source of investiture. The shard of the local system may change or warp this in some way, but it remains true of all systems in the Cosmere. Healing Another aspect to investiture is the almost innate ability to heal. Now, not all forms of investiture heals, and not all forms of investiture that heals will heal you in the same way but there does seem to be a strong link between wielding investiture and being able to heal wounds. The most obvious example is how Stormlight can heal a Night Radiant's physical wounds without the Night Radiant even thinking about it. Investiture in the form of Stormlight can also heal wounds to the wielder's soul. Remember when Kaladin healed his arm after it being cut by a shard blade? That was the investiture healing the wound to his soul. Not all forms of investiture can do this however. Healing through Investiture does, however, seem to have some innate limitations. It seems that mental disorders like depression that forms a part of a person's personality will not be healed. And since muscles work through electrical signals from the brain to the muscle, being electrocuted cannot be healed since it's not physically damaging the muscles. Aging and genetic diseases also seem to persist in the face of investiture field healing. And of course, any wound with traces of aluminium in it will not heal until the metal has been removed. There are many ways that Investiture can heal through the Cosmere. 
On Scadriel, for example, Ferrochemical Gold can store health, and Elementic Pewter can help heal normally fatal wounds. Using Aeons on Cell will allow you to heal yourself or others, and an Awakened on Nalthus can heal someone by giving up their Divine Breath. I didn't touch on everything, but I think this demonstrates just how closely Investiture and Healing is linked with one another. There is of course always limitations and differences between magic systems, but this is clearly a key part of Investiture that manifests at least in some form on almost all Shard Worlds. Bonds Another innate and key pillar of Investiture seems to be the ability to bond things together through the cognitive or spiritual realms. Now your first thought may go straight to the form of bonds talked about in the Stormlight Archive, and you wouldn't be far off, but of course there's a bit more to it. Bonds are generally created by specific bonding entities. On Roshar, the bonding entity would be Spren. Spren can create a bond between themselves and a human, or a bond between themselves and a singer. Lesser Spren can also create a bond between themselves and creatures of lesser intelligence. In each instance, however, the act of forming the bond between the person and the spren will allow the person to gain access to some form of investiture. This is why the Nahelm bond makes a radiant, or why Lux spren or Chasm spren bonding large chasm fiends will allow it to grow to a size far larger than gravity should allow. On Cell, you have bonds between humans and Sions. I could do a whole video on Sions, but they're basically the only known bonding entity on Cell. They do not grant access to investiture necessarily, but it did seem like most Elantrians before the city's fall had a Sion of their own. This seems to imply that being invested may have led to a greater chance of forming a bond with a Sion. Unfortunately, we don't have much more information on Cell right now, as Elantris is really the only major book in that world. Nalthus is interesting in that the bonding entity is actually created by humans. The bonding entity on Nalthus would be any Type 4 biochromatic entity. The only ones we know of right now are Nightblood and Azure's Sword. This doesn't grant powers, but has powers of its own. In Nightblood's case, the sword can bond to some extent with anyone close enough to allow it the ability to telepathically communicate. As far as we know, there is no bonding entity on Scadriel, but we haven't seen the whole planet, so there's always a chance. Categories of Investiture Now, not to further confuse things, there are also different categories of investiture out there. The three categories are End Positive Investiture, End Negative Investiture, and End Neutral Investiture. The most common of these is End Positive Investiture. End Positive Investiture is investiture where power is added or given to the entity using the investiture from an external source. Think of an Allomancer. Burning the metal gives them an allomantic power to use as they see fit. A Surge Binder on Roshar uses Stormlight to manipulate the surges as they see fit. Most forms of magic are end positive. End Neutral Investiture is investiture that does not come from an external source to grant power, but rather investiture that the practitioner already had but rather repurposed for use in a different way. The easiest illustration is Ferrochemy from Scadriel. The Ferrochemist stores an aspect and then uses it later when needed. No energy is added from an external source and no energy is taken away. It is merely stored and later used in a different way. Awakening is also in neutral even though color is lost. Finally, we have End Negative Investiture. End Negative Investiture is the rarest of all and the only example we have is Hemallergy. With end negative investiture, some power is lost. For example, hemologic spikes will steal power from someone else, and when not within a body, the investiture within the spike will begin to decay. Mistborn as a series is a very good way to see the different categories of investiture as it has all three categories within its pages. Ultimately, the different categories don't matter too much and rather just indicates how power is given or processed. Anti-investiture and finally, we have a new concept introduced in Rhythm of War. Just as you have matter and antimatter, there also exist investiture and anti-investiture. 
When investiture and anti-investiture come into contact, they will annihilate each other just like their matter counterparts. It also seems that the effect of this annihilation is more destructive when the contact occurs within a vacuum. So far, the only known form of anti-investiture we know of is anti-stormlight and anti-void light, though we can be fairly confident there is an anti-form of every kind of light. Anti-investiture is a very new concept and it's not something we have a lot of information on right now. My theory is that the destructive force of combining investiture and anti-investiture will likely be harnessed and utilized to eventually allow faster than light travel when we get to the space stage of the Cosmere. I could be completely wrong, but it seems to me Brandon Sanderson introduced this as a way to later utilize in that way in order to use it for faster than light travel. But that's just a theory of course and I'd like to hear what you think might be the real reason that he introduced anti-investiture. But anyway, that has been it from me today guys. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. I upload three times a week, so I'm sure you'll find something here you can enjoy. What else would you like to see me cover in the Cosmere 101 series? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, this has been Raven. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care everyone.